Hello and welcome to our prayer during the week. A special welcome if this is your first time with us. Um, we will be saying some prayers together and exploring a Bible passage. You will find all the prayers and responses that you need are on your screen. Um, but you would find, might find it helpful to have a Bible to hand with you so that we can read together a little bit later on. So we're going to start now with a moment of quiet before we begin our prayers. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Your love, O Lord, reaches the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. And our canticle is the prayer of Ephraim the Syrian, written around 373, so it's a very ancient prayer. What shall I give you, Lord, in return for all your kindness? Glory to you for your love. Glory to you for your patience. Glory to you for forgiving all of our sins. Glory to you for coming to save our souls. Glory to you for your incarnation in the Virgin's womb. Glory to you for your bonds. Glory to you for receiving the cut of the flesh, of the lash. Glory to you for accepting mockery. Glory to you for your crucifixion. Glory to you for your burial. Glory to you for your resurrection. Glory to you that you were preached to all. Glory to you in whom they believed. And our psalm is Psalm 63, and we're going to read verses 1 to 8. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand shall hold me fast. But those who seek my soul to destroy it shall go down to the depths of the earth. Let them fall by the edge of the sword, and become a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God, all those who swear by him shall be glad. For the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And so we're going to come to our reading now, and we have started to have some times of prayer on Zoom, and during those times we have been exploring the book of Mark. And on Monday we were looking at Mark chapter 1, which is quite a long chapter, and we didn't have time to really explore all of it. So we're going to read a little bit more of it and to have a think about it. So this is taken from John Chap uh, sorry, from Mark chapter 1, beginning at verse 35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages, so that I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he travelled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. 
Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing, as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in a lonely place. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of Mark has such an intense immediacy about it. The stories are taught, told so rapidly they almost fall over one another. One minute we're in the synagogue, next minute we're up a mountain, the next minute we're dealing with a man with leprosy. We seem to be almost bombarded with so much information. It's as though Mark has so much to tell us about the wonders of the life of Jesus that he just can't wait. As fast as he's thinking of one thing, something else is coming into his mind. And so there's a lot for us to unpack and explore. And we so often just skim through these Gospels thinking we read them all, we know them all, and we miss those little gems that are amongst the words. And the first thing that strikes me about this passage is that Jesus goes away to pray. He finds a solitary place. And the second thing that strikes me is that within moments, they're all running after him, wanting more, wanting him to come down, to teach, to heal. And Jesus must have felt overwhelmed sometimes by the amount of demands on him. And if at times we feel that we can are overwhelmed on the demands on us, then we need to take a leaf out of his book as well to find ourselves that solitary time, those solitary places to stop and to pray and to be with God. And that's what we do during these sessions and indeed during the other times that we are beginning to develop during the week. But there's also that sense of the excitement of telling the story of Jesus, of proclaiming the good news. The man with leprosy who was healed, he was told to be quiet. He was told to go to the priest and then not to go and shout it abroad. But no, he went out in his excitement and told the world what had happened to him. And I wonder whether we, so we often lose that excitement because it's so familiar to us. So during this month, while we look at Mark's gospel, I do pray that we begin to get that sense of excitement and joy back, that we can really see afresh these wonderful stories and the wonderful good news of Jesus who came to teach and to save. Amen. And so we're going to come to our time of prayer and bring before God our concerns, the things that we are thankful for, and our prayers for the world. So let us pray. Gracious God, who gives us all good gifts, we thank you for the learning, for the commitment of those who are working so hard and who have, it seems, been able to produce a vaccine which may well help our world to get back to normal, to fight the virus which has caused such devastation. We thank you for the good news and we pray that everything will go smoothly, that all the tests will be done properly and safely and that very soon that vaccine will be available, especially to those who are so particularly vulnerable. We also give thanks for the nurses, doctors and carers in the hospitals, in care homes, and those who care for people in their own homes. We pray for your strength for them when times are hard. We pray for our homes, our families, our friends and all whom we love. We give thanks for them 
and we bring before you anyone who is close to us who particularly needs our prayers, who is facing illness, uncertainty, a loss of a job, fear about where the, their income is going to come from, fear of loneliness. And we pray for our communities and our churches. Help us to serve each other, to be aware of each other's needs, to be able to offer hope and encouragement and to And so we pray for our homes. We pray for our communities and our churches. We pray that we would be able to support each other, to be aware of each other's needs. We pray for our communities and our churches. We pray that we would be able to serve each other, to support each other and to care for each other in difficult times. And we say together, God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at mine end and at my departing. Amen. Thank you for joining in this time of prayer today. If you have any questions or concerns, then please do get in touch. If you would like to join in with some of the new um, prayer times that we have then do have a look on the uh, Hope Church website you'll find all the information there and if you look on the calendar you'll see what's happening on each day and do come and join in with some of those it's an opportunity to share prayer time but also fellowship and to at least see each other and hear each other's voices even when we can't be physically together and so before we finish, let's say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so, may Christ dwell in our hearts by faith. Amen.